Hello my friends and welcome to my world. My name is Julia and today's project involves making my own journal again and filling a few pages. I have this art by Marlene Dye and that cuts a cover, the pages and decorations on your journal and you can use the paper of your choice. Now I like to work big but I'm going to give this a go using Tim Holtz stamps and inks in this journal. And we have animals starring in this journal. And then I might do one with steampunk or another with mermaids. Who knows? The sky is the limit. And I will link to this die set in the description box below. This die that cuts the cover and the one for the pages is too long for my cutting plates. But I solved that by running it one time. Then move my plate so I can run it a second time where I didn't cut the first time and I do that for the cover and a few pages. So now I have the cover and pages and it's time to start inking, stamping and much more. I'm starting with my cover and I will ink blend Distress Oxide inks onto the outside of the cover in the color Salvage Patina Peacock Feathers and Wilted Violet. I go back and forth between the colors so many times that I had to leave some of it out, but in the end I am happy. Every time I lay down a new color, I then go back to the one before to make the blend smooth. Now let's decorate this background starting with this stencil from Tim Holtz. I mask off with copy paper so I can contain the reaction and spray with water. I use a paper towel to pick up the ink that reacted with the water and I get this subtle and imperfect texture on my background. I do the same procedure in three places and then I bring back my darkest ink peacock feathers and ink blend that pattern in a few places. Next I'm using another stencil and an embossing dauber. I put some embossing ink on my surface and stencil in that writing along the edge before I cover it in clear embossing powder and melt it until smooth and shiny. And I do the same on the other side on the of the front cover. Then I bring out archival ink in black soot and go around the edges, blending it in a bit around the embossed words, so they really pop. On the back side of the cover, I use the first stencil and archival black soot to add some interest. The last thing for now is to add some white splashes. I use gesso mixed with water and use a fan brush to get those small white dots. And I drink coffee, lots and lots of coffee. For the inside of the cover, I use Distress Oxide inks in Kitsch Flamingo Speckled Eggs and Mermaid Lagoon and I blend them randomly, but as always, I go back and forth between the colors until they blend. I'm going to use the same technique for the inside as I did for the outside, but another stencil. I spray with water mixed with perfect pearls in a few places and get this subtle shimmery pattern on my inside cover.
When the inside is dry, I use my anti-static bag because I'm going to heat emboss. I use the same stencil and embossing dauber and stencil in that pattern partially. And I cover it with clear embossing powder and melt it until smooth. And I do that in a few places. Next, I do as I did before. I ink blend the archival black soot over the embossing and I can wipe off any excess ink on the embossing with a paper towel. My focal point this time is animals and I start with Tim Holtz's Crazy Dogs but since there is no poodle in this set I brought in another, another set so I could have my poodle represented. Now I'm starting with a dear dear dog. For me this one represents our friend's dog, Rolf. I stamp Rolf in archival black suit and then I stamp all of the other dogs a couple of times to have options later. This big dog reminds me of my father and his girlfriend's dog, Max. I color Max in yellow tones of distress oxide inks in antique linen, scattered straw and mustard seed. I start by using my lightest tone to make shadows and then I deepen the shadows with scattered straw and mustard seed and blend them out with my lightest antique linen here and there. Rolf is a black and white Chinese powder puff and a gentleman and I'm using Distress Oxide inks in black soot and hickory smoke. I made his tummy white as well as his eyebrows and moustache and I use a white gel pen to achieve that bright white. I use two pink shades for his nose and a blue for his collar. Next, I need some snarky Halloween cats and the snarky quotes that come with it. I stamp the cats and their sarcasm in archival black suit. The last animal I'm going to add is the crazy birds because they are awesome and have such amazing facial expressions. I stamp them in archival black suit and add them to the cats for coloring. I color two of the cats with distress oxide inks in rusty hinge and ground espresso, making my shadows with rusty hinge before I darken them with ground espresso and blend them together again with rusty hinge. I stamped and colored loads of dogs, cats and birds, so I will only show a few that made it onto my page, like this cute bird, colored with ripe persimmon and mustard seed making the shadows with the yellow and deepening the shadows with the orange and I blend it all out with the yellow again. And this cutie is colored with a pink kitsch flamingo and the blue blueprint sketch. Next I'm stamping a couple of poodles that actually resembles my own dog Boo. She is a brown, small poodle with a temper. I color one boo in brown shades, vintage photo and ground espresso. I color her face, tail and paws with a lighter vintage photo and go around the edges with ground espresso and fill it in with vintage photo again. Now, we can't have it too realistic, can we? So I color the other blue with blueprint sketch as the lighter shade and shipped sapphire as my darker and I do the same procedure as before. 
Speaking of realistic coloring, I color the another Rolf in turquoise shades, salvage patina as my lighter and peacock feathers as my darker. I color a few more birds before I move on to the actual pages. For this page I'm thinking ink smooshing and I chose three Distress Oxide colors Mustard Seed, Twisted Citron and Rustic Wilderness. Starting with my lightest mustard seed, I smoosh the ink pad on my surface, spray with water and dip my page a few times. I dry it off before I use a new color so the inks layer rather than blend and I do it for all of the colors in many layers. Then I bring out a blending tool and use the same ink pads to enhance the color already there. Last on this first part of this page I bring out archival black soot and darken the edges. For the other side I chose picked raspberry, ripe persimmon and mustard seed and I do the same as before, dip and dry and dip again until I'm happy. And then I go to the ink pads with my blending tool and bring out that pink. For the two pages remaining I use Distress Oxide sprays. I spray with water and then squeeze lemonade, crack pistachio and peacock feathers. Then I spray the next page in squeeze lemonade, dried marigold and fired brick. For the other sides I will use wilted violet and picked raspberries. And for the other page I used abandoned coral and peacock feathers. Now, this is a Tim Holtz inspired journal, so I thought I would use this Halloween stamp set to make everything less cute. I stamp that owl in Versamark embossing ink and cover it with Ranger's glittery black powder and melt it. For the inside and back of the cover I use that skeleton and I stamp like before with embossing ink but cover it with regular black powder and melt it until shiny. Next I'm using the crow and stamp it in the corner and heat emboss with black embossing powder. For the back side I stamp parts of that skeleton in two places and heat emboss them until smooth and shiny. Next I'm putting this journal together with a stretchy string. I thread it through the holes and tie a knot on the back. And this test made me realize that I use too thin a paper and I will fix it with multi-mat medium and pieces of washi tape. So moving on I get to work on the pink and purple page and I use this stencil and black paint to stencil in the notes. Then I pull out two musical note stamps and stamp them around the edges and heat emboss them, framing my page. For the green page I used a ruler stamp from yet another stamp set of Tim Holtz and heat embossed that ruler as a border around my page. In the same stamp set I found the, these brushes and numbers and I stamped them to frame yet another page and I heat embossed them in black. For the last page I bring back a stencil from before and an embossing dauber and I stencil with that embossing ink before I cover it in black powder and melt. Then I bring out that archival black soot and darken the edges yet again. The 
the stars of the show are here and I glue Max, Rolf and Boo to the front cover. Before I start gluing more animals, I bring out a skull stencil and wilted violet ink and stencil in some skulls. Next I glue down one of my cats running and pop up that intense looking bird on foam tape and glue it down behind. Before I glue down the sentiment, it's behind me, isn't it? I make black sketchy lines around all of my white sentiment strips. Here I am gluing a cat in a precarious situation and glue down the blue poodle standing on its behind and a sentiment saying I know the voices aren't real but they have some great ideas. On each side I use my Stabilo Oil pencil to make some shadows. I scribble it on and use a wet brush to drag the color out, making my animals pop. I glue down the turquoise Rolf and put demanding looking birds around him and use the sentiment Today was great, until people. Last but not least, I glue down a guilty looking cat and two birds and the sentiment I meant to behave, but there were too many other options. And with that, this mini art journal is finished. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you will come back soon again. Until the next time, see you soon.